Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obueda. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Lord, we thank you right now. We give you praise for your word is true. Thank you for being the King of kings, the Lamb of God. Lord, we thank you for ministering to us. We thank you for being our high priest. Thank you for being our, our teacher, our helper. Without you, we can do nothing. Lord, we say thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Last week, I told you seven things the Holy Ghost wants to do for you. <laughs> and we didn't come through, so the Holy Ghost added one. Eight things the Holy Ghost wants to do for you. <laughs> In Africa, uh, the part of the world I stay, when we buy something like a granite from someone on the roadside, we used to ask them to put jarra. It means add more to it. That's what they say in Africa. They say jara means add more to it. I think the Holy Ghost is adding more to this service. Hallelujah. I'm excited being here this morning with you. Eight things the Holy Ghost wants to do for you. Number one, he wants to be a witness. He wants to be a witness. He wants to be a witness that we are the sons of God. He wants to be a witness that we are the sons of God. You know the Spirit of God wants to show you what to do about that situation, about that circumstances. And without the ministry of the Spirit, we cannot be productive and effective. So when the Spirit comes, he brings a lot of confidence when you know you're dealing with God. And we need confidence in our relationship with God. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. In Romans 8, 16, it said, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirits. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirits. Is it possible for me to be hearing something and the Spirit did not bear witness? The answer is yes. If someone is talking to you or telling you something, your spirit is expected to be a witness but your spirit can only be a witness when the holy ghost give it to your spirit have you ever had something and you said no you, most times you are not the one saying no it's because the spirit bear it witness with your spirit that simply means the holy ghost your spirit can only be in agreement with the holy ghost i said your spirit man which is man is a spirit. Your spirit man can only be in agreement with the spirit of God. He bears witness with your spirit. Now, when I hear something or when something is happening around me, the spirit can be a witness in me, letting me know what to do about that situation. And here, look at what he said in Romans 8, 16. He said, the spirit is a bearer witness with our spirits. The Spirit is a bearer witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. This revelation is the foundation for confidence. When you know that God is your father, there is no limit to what you can expect from him. I said, when you know that God is your father, there is no limit, of, uh, there is no limit to what you can expect from him because you know he's your father. You know he's willing to do what he said he would do. So the Spirit will be as witness with us that we are children of God. That also indicates that we need to know that we have covenant with God. 
And because I have covenant with God, no situation can suppress me. So the first thing we need to establish, the spirit bears witness with our spirit. That's number one. Number two, the spirit will lead you. The spirit will lead you. Now, in the kingdom of God, we are led by God's spirit. I said something this morning to some folks. I said, living by faith and being led by the spirit is the key to supernatural success. I said, living by faith and being led by the spirit is the key to supernatural success. Living by faith and being led by the spirit is the key to supernatural success. If you want to see supernatural success, then you have to respond to the leadership of the Holy Ghost. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, Romans 8, verse 14, it said, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see, being led by the Spirit is the key to productivity. I said being led by the Spirit is the key to productivity. Making wise decision begins with being led by the Spirit. To make a wise decision concerning your finances, concerning your job, concerning your business, it is when you're led by the Spirit. Now, the Spirit doesn't push us around. The Spirit provides leadership and expects us to follow. The Spirit of God provides leadership and expects us to follow. God does not force His will on people. I want to say that again. I say God does not force His will on people. God can only suggest His will to you. God can only tell you, my son, I want you to do this. You have the right to say no. You have the right to reject God's instruction if you want to. You have the right to walk away from God's instruction. God does not force his will on people. Don't forget this. God may give you an instruction to do something, and if you're not okay with it, you don't have to do it. <laughs> How does that sound? You don't have to do it. But listen to this. Whenever God gives you an instruction, it's not for his benefit, it's for your benefit. Wow. I said, whenever God gives you an instruction, it's not for God's benefit. God does not benefit from the instruction he gives to you. You are the one who benefits from God's instruction. So God instructs, God does not enforce. God instructs. That was why the scripture said, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You know, many years ago, I heard this story, and this preacher was mindfully used of God. You know, sometimes we pray, God use us, God use us. Then when God starts using us, we say, people are using me. I don't like how people are using me. But you prayed that prayer. Hey, somebody's laughing now. Hallelujah. <laughs> You were praying, God, use me. God, use me. Then God starts using you. Then you shout it and say, people are using me. How else will God use you? <laughs> How else is he going to use you? So when you pray God use you, he brings people. And people are not perfect. People have issues. People have challenges. Some people don't think. Some think. Some think they don't act right. Some act right when it's convenient for them. So the Spirit leads us into the lifestyle that is consistent with God's will. And for the Spirit to lead us effectively, or let me put it this way, for we to respond to the leadership of the Spirit, we have to consistently renew our mind in the light of His Word. If I don't consistently renew my mind with God's word, I can't flow with the Holy Ghost. It's difficult to flow with the Spirit of God. It's difficult to move in the direction of the Spirit if you don't renew your mind consistently. What is the renewing of the mind, renewing of the mind going to do for us? It will bring us to a place called the mind of Christ. When you renew your mind with God's word, you will come to the place called what? The mind of Christ. Now you can think like him. Now you can respond to him. So the spirit is in your life to lead you. Making decision without the involvement of the Holy Ghost may lead to disaster. I want to say that again. I said making decision 
without the input of the Holy Ghost, without the contribution of the Spirit of God, may lead to disaster. The Spirit is in your life to lead you and not for you to lead the Spirit. You know, some people want to tell God, God, listen, this is what I want you to do, and this is how I want you to do it, and I don't care what you feel about it. Wow. Wow. Imagine talking to your boss like that. This is what I want you to do, and this is how I want you to do it, and I don't care what you think about it. No, that's not the way you walk with God. He gives you the lead, your responsibilities to respond. So the Spirit is in your life to lead you. And let me say this to you. If you're led by the Spirit, you will stay out of trouble. One of the keys to staying out of trouble is to be led by the Spirit. One of the keys to staying out of losses is to be led by the Spirit. One of the keys to overcoming sudden death, pain, and shame is to be led by the Spirit. Number three, the Spirit is in your life to teach you. The Spirit is in your life to teach you. He's the teacher. If I'm ministering to you right now, the Spirit will bear witness with your spirit that what I'm telling you is right or what I'm telling you is wrong. The Spirit teaches. He's the one who does the teaching. It is by the Spirit who can judge what we're hearing. You know, someone can be talking, but it's not of God. By the Spirit, you know that you're listening to a familiar spirit. By the Spirit of God, you know that this man is a false prophet. You don't know a false prophet by their name. They don't write it on their forehead. They don't write. Nobody goes around telling people, I'm a false prophet. Listen to me, I'm a false prophet. I'm a false apostle. Nobody does that. In short, false prophet goes to Bible school. False prophets study theology very well. As when they begin to talk, you can, well, it sounds like God, but what is the but there? Deal with that but. Let the Holy Ghost help you deal with that but. You're listening, but it's not. You know, many, many, many years ago, when I started Periscope, a lady was actually encouraging me. This lady was talking to me. I you need to scope every day. And I you need to follow some people. And she started mentioning people I should follow. Now, I started following them. Why was I following them? Because she told me, if I follow them, they're going to follow me back. Not because I like what they were preaching. So a time come, I said, I'm tired with this crap. I'm taking them out of my list. No way, no way. I don't care who follow me. No, no, no. I started delete, 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 delete. I, I can't be listening to that. And you said, just follow them. No. She was encouraging me, Apostle, follow them, follow them. They have more followers. And when they get to know you, but what do they teach you? Never line up with God's word. Be careful of trying to promote something in the flesh. Ooh. Ooh. That has to digest. Just take it in. Be careful that you don't promote the things of the spirit through the flesh. Because the flesh may lead you into people that what they'll be saying will not bear witness with your spirit. But because of what you think you can gain from it, let me say this to you. If God have not opened the door, don't open it. I said, if God have not opened the door, I said, don't open it. If you try to open it, what will come out of it? You're not going to like it. If God have not opened the door, don't open it. Because if you open it, what will come out of it? You won't like it. So the spirit is in your life to teach you. I'd like us to look at this scripture in John 14, 26. John 14, 26. Watch this. It said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Who does the teaching? The Holy Ghost. He shall teach you all things. And when someone is ministering, you will know if the Spirit of God is speaking through him or her. When someone is ministering, but if you're not spiritually minded, you can't detect falsehood. You have to be spiritually minded to know what is falsehood, to know who is a false minister. Because we have a lot of false people all over the place. 
A lot of people have become gullible and they can't judge those things. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to teach you. He's the teacher because he's the author behind the book called the Bible. It's a man wrote as they were inspired by the Spirit. So it is the Spirit of God that authored the Bible. He was the one who inspired men to write. He was the one who inspired men to speak. He was the one who inspired men to teach. He's by the Spirit. He said the Spirit will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. So the mission of the Spirit is to teach you, to help you have understanding of the Word of God. You see, without the Spirit, you can't understand it. One day I was listening to something, and, and I just felt, oh my God, I, I don't know what is this. You know, you, I don't know what is this, you know. You know, let me say this to you. Don't be carried away by followership. Learn to judge things in the light of the truth. That's the word for somebody right now. I said, don't be carried away by followership. Learn to judge things in the light of the truth. Learn to judge things. And it is by the Spirit who will have a good sense of judgment. I want to say this again. I said, it is by the Spirit who will have a good sense of judgment. It is by the Spirit who will have a good sense of judgment. Hallelujah. It's by the Spirit. So the Spirit is in your life to teach you, to explain things to you, to reveal things to you. The next thing, the Spirit is in you to comfort you. When there is a trouble, when there is a challenging time, the Holy Spirit is called the comforter. His job is to comfort you. You're trying to lose your mind. He tells you, don't worry about it. I'll fix it. <laughs> You're trying to worry about that decision that made in your company. The Holy Ghost said, don't worry about that decision. I will handle it. He comforts you for you to come into rest. The Holy Ghost comforts you as you can come into rest. It is the comfort of the Holy Ghost that energizes your faith work. I said it's the comfort of the Holy Spirit that energizes your faith. Sometimes we, we can be tired. Maybe you're believing God for something. You have prayed. You have sown your seed. You have fasted. But nothing has happened. No. Let me tell you this. Something has happened. But you have to see it with your eyes of faith. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see it with your eyes of it. Something has happened. Sometimes we say something has ha not happened. Something just started happening. Yeah, something just started happening. But these optical eyes can see it. Second Corinthians 5 verse 7. In Second Corinthians 5 verse 7, he said, For we walk by faith and not by sight. What happens when people walk by sight? They have wrong conclusions. When an individual walk by sight, they have wrong conclusion. They have conclusions that is not consistent with the word of God. Why? Because they are walking by sight. And then you hear people saying, seeing is believing. No, it is believing that becomes seen. Is you got to believe it to see it. You don't see it to believe it. When you see it, you no longer believe it. It is believing that leads to seeing. You got to believe it. You have to believe it, that it's happening, that it's going to come to pass. He said, the reason why you have to walk by faith, that is the only way you can please God. The reason why you have to walk by faith, that is the only way you can please God. Let me say this to you. Even if you have money, fill the whole room, fill the whole house, still walk by faith. You know why? That money can go in one day. Go and ask some billionaires that are broke. Just go to YouTube and type, billionaires that lost their money, billionaires that went broke, billionaires that are homeless, and you'll be amazed of the numbers of people that will be popping out for you to watch, and they will tell you why they went broke. So that money filled this whole house doesn't mean you should trust in money. Trusting in money can hurt your future, but trusting in God will protect your future. <laughs> Wow. I said, trusting in money can hurt your future, but trusting in God will protect your future. You secure your future by trusting in God, not trusting in things. Because when you trust in things, there is what is called inflation. There is deflation. There are economic crises. It hit nations. 
Our country never knew that two years ago they were going to be in a major recession. The prices of things went up and people were complaining all over the country. Hardship came. People that used to be rich became poor. People that used to be poor became poorer. If there is a word like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> because of the economic hardship. Why? Recession means economic decline. Things decline. The value of the money drops. You have the Naira, but you can't do much with it. Why? Because economic recession. But listen to this. Recession happened in Bible days. Do you know there was a famine in the land? When you hear about famine, famine is recession. <laughs> famine is what? Is recession. And Isaac was in that land and there was famine. Listen to this. The comfort of the Holy Ghost secures your faith in the right direction. I want to say that again. I said the comfort of the Holy Ghost secures your focus in the right direction. You, you don't know why you can't give up on it. And you keep believing God for it. You, you, you keep trusting God for it. You, you, you keep trusting his word and say, Lord, I trust your word concerning this. Let me say this to you. Don't stretch towards it. Trust God towards it. Don't stretch towards it. But trust God towards it. Don't stress yourself towards it. Don't, don't begin to stress yourself. You know, sometimes we can begin to worry. This has not been done. This has not been done. That has not been done. This has not been done. And if you look at the things that have not been done, then you're opening up for depression. But look at for a few things that are done and get inspired by that. Because the enemy wants to remind you of the things that have not been done. The comfort of the Holy Ghost will strengthen your hope. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's a word for someone. The comfort of the Holy Spirit will strengthen your hope and the comfort of the Holy Spirit will protect your hope. I told people the reason why you see me being committed to God this way is because I don't want to end badly. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> then somebody will ask, Apostle, why are you always committed? Why are you always? Man, you don't have an idea of where I'm coming from. <laughs> if you come from where I come from, you want to pray many times in a day. <laughs> you want to look up to Jesus for everything. I'm telling you. <laughs> You will need him all the way. All the steps you're taking, you will need Jesus. I'm telling you, because crazy things happen in this world. Crazy things happen. So you need Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 said, looking unto Jesus. You know why? If you're not looking there, frustration will overtake you. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The, the scripture says, he said, looking unto Jesus. You know, sometimes you're asking yourself a question. Why should I keep looking? Nothing is working around me. No, honey, the reason why things are working is because you're looking. Looking unto him. So the Holy Ghost is in your life to comfort you. If there is any burden, if there is any pressure, if there is anything you're dealing with, I just wanted to say, dear sweet Holy Spirit, I cast these cares on you. Dear sweet Holy Spirit, I cast these cares on you. Because if you don't cast the cares on him, why are we depressed most of the time on men's need? Why are we depressed most of the time? Our inability to trust that God will come through. Why are we depressed most of the time? It's when we lose our hope in God. When people lose their hope in God, they become depressed, they become frustrated, they begin to lose their mind. No, don't lose your hope in God. Because your hope in Him will sustain your passion for continuity. One of the ways our passion for continuity is being sustained is when we have hope in God. So the scripture we're right here, we're talking about that the Holy Ghost will comfort you. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 1.14. In 2 Corinthians 1.14, thank you, Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 1.14, I read this scripture and it ministered to me. 2 Corinthians 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 
Okay, where is my, okay. Chapter one, verse four, sorry. Second Corinthians, chapter one, verse four. Second Corinthians, chapter one, verse four. Second Corinthians, chapter one, verse four. Hallelujah, glory be to God. In second Corinthians one, verse four, and, and look at what he said. He said, who comforted us in all our tribulation? Who comforted us in all our tribulation? Second Corinthians chapter one, verse four that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Did you see why you're having the comfort of the Holy Ghost? That you'll be able to comfort those who will be in trouble. Those that are going through tough time, difficult time. There are people, their problem is not a money problem. Their problem is a health problem. There are people that don't have a health problem. What they have is a money problem. There are people today, the major problem they have is their inability to work with people. There are people that their problem today is an inability to forgive. There are all manner of situations that people are in, but the comfort of the Holy Ghost is the key to resolving issues. I want to say that again. I said the comfort of the Holy Ghost is the key to resolving issues. There are certain issues you can't resolve by your strength. Anytime you remember it, you feel sad. You feel sad. Maybe how they treated you. You know, I, I often say to people, you cannot successfully do the will of God without some people in your life being offended. If everybody claps for you, there is a problem with you. If everybody claps for you, do you see what I'm doing? Everybody clapping for you. Hey, Denzel, go, Denzel. Everybody, Denzel, go, Denzel. No, Denzel, there is a problem. Everybody can clap for you. When everybody start clapping, be careful. I said, why are you guys clapping? Everybody can clap for you. And sometimes we want everybody to clap for us. Our human nature likes it for every, do you think that it was every time that God asked you to do something that it was convenient for you? Let me see your hand. If every time God asked you to do something, it was convenient for you, lift up your hand in this church. Anybody like that here today? Okay, maybe I'm the only one. Amen. All of you are perfect. I trust you. You don't bother about yourself. You don't have to be guilty. <laughs> have you been to a situation? God is asking you to do something and your flesh is dragging you behind and say, you can do that. You can do that. You can be normal. Are you losing your mind? <laughs> Are you losing your mind? But you see, when it comes to the will of God, the flesh is always in opposition. I said, when it comes to the will of God, the flesh is always in opposition. You know why? The flesh does not expect you to come into his will. Satan's greatest nightmare and fear is when you step into the will of God for your life. <sighs> Satan's greatest nightmare and fear. He is going to use everybody around you to fight you. He is going to use people that used to be loving, that used to be gentle, and you suddenly saw them change. So what's going on here? It's not just the people, the enemy is trying to get your attention. And know it when the devil is trying to get your attention. The Bible said, give no place to the devil. It, it suggests that we can give him a place. The Bible said, resist the devil. It said, give no place. It said, resist the devil. It is a decision for you to resist. God is asking you to do something. The flesh is telling you, you know, we can't afford that. You know, we can't do that. You know, we can't do this. You know, he, he wants to talk you out of the will of God. Do you know how many millions of Christians today that Satan have talked them out of the will of God? A young man was sharing with me this morning. He said, Apostle, look at, I'll be praying and then depression will just come. I'll be praying and then I'll just stop and start think, worrying about my problems. I said, listen, my friend, when it comes to praying, you just have to pray because the enemy is going to come at you with every thought 
With every thought, the thought of condemnation, the thought of this has not been done, the thought of that has not been done, how are we going to get on to the next level? How will, the enemy, that is why the Bible says, casting down every imagination. You don't cast down imagination with imagination. <laughs> you cast down the imagination with the word of God. Casting down every imagination. So he's telling you, this is not going to work out. 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 He's talk- Let me say this to you. The enemy talks to people. Satan is not a quiet spirit. He's a talking spirit. You think the devil is that cartoon you used to see children have with one horn? And you forget that cartoon. They can show that to children, not to me. Hallelujah. The devil is not a cartoon. He he whispers gently. Do you think God will help you out of this situation? And sometimes when he's talking, if you are not careful, you will think it's the voice of God. You have to be able to discern, to, to know that this is not the voice of God. He doesn't come in a way, you know, the way people present the devil, they present him as if when he's coming, he's going to break your door. Sometimes he doesn't break the door. He knocks the door gently. Hello? Hello? Who is this? <laughs> Are you wondering? No, he's not shouting. You know, we have a very wrong idea. That was why Jesus said, Jesus, uh, he talked about the devices of the devil, the devices. He said, well, we're, 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 we're not concerning his devices. Paul was talking about the devices, the way he comes. He said he appears like an angel of light. He transforms like an angel of light. You see, he comes in the times that you're used to. So when the enemy is coming, he doesn't shut the door. Brrr, come out, come out, come out, come out. Oh, Dana, come out, come out, come out. I want to talk to you. He doesn't do that. He doesn't. That's not the devil. He comes in very softly. And he begins to talk. And the conversation starts in a such a way that you never knew the enemy was talking. I mean, for, you said, what am I thinking this way? Have you ever caught yourself thinking in the wrong direction and said, why am I thinking this? Do I have anyone like that in this church? Why am I thinking this? Because there is an enemy. He tries to creep in your thinking. He tries to creep in your thoughts. And this is why the Bible said, resist the devil. Let me tell you what to resist. Resist ungodly thoughts. Resist. You know one day, Satan was talking to me. And he said, look at how you're helping people. How many of them really care about you? <clears throat> you know what I want to say? Oh, yes, yes. I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you, false. You see, if you don't rebuke that voice, that voice will begin to tell you things that you begin to regret. You start thinking and behaving in a such a way you never expected to behave. Sometimes when you see people acting funny, the enemy is trying to take control of your mind. And that was why the Bible said, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. It come very softly. It said, look at how you're laboring with people. Look at how you're pouring into people. Look at this. Look at that. He comes. He's trying to shut you down and tell you he doesn't want it. What do you get from them? What do you benefit from them? You see, the enemy starts the conversation, the conversation as if he's trying to make you feel good. As if he's trying to let you know that you're being used. As if he's trying to make you look like, well, I'm working for you. But that is a trap that leads to things and distraction. That's it. It, it comes that way. And this is why you need the comfort of the Holy Ghost to consistently rebuke every voice that is not of God. Every voice that is not of God. So the next point is, the Holy Ghost is in you to help you. He's in you to help you. He's your helper. 
The Holy Ghost is in you to help you when you look at the challenges of life, the situations of life, the troubles of life. Maybe challenges with your son, with your daughter, with your business partner. And then the Spirit of God, help me. Help me not to lose my mind this morning. Because you can lose your mind. Help me not to miss it today. Help me, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, help me to put my emotion on that subjection. Because you want to tell them where to get off. Come on. You want to tell them, oh, you want to talk to me? I've got something to give to you. Just wait. Watch out. I'm going to give you more. <laughs> And the Holy Ghost is telling you, you take it easy. Say, no, I can't take it easy. Let me tell them who they are. Who do you think you are? What do you think you're going to do to me? <laughs> so we, we need the Holy Ghost to comfort us. We need the Holy Ghost to help us. You know, sometimes people could just, some people have lost their mind. And you are talking to them and you say, why not do this thing right? And they know what is right to do, but they're doing what is wrong. And you're wondering what's wrong with you. What's wrong with you? Let me say this to you. It is by the Spirit you take control of your emotion. Wow. I said it is by the Spirit you take control of your emotion. It may be your spouse. I said to people that marriage is to forgive us that is willing to keep forgiving, to keep living together. If you don't know how to forgive, don't, don't get married. Marriage is for people that have a love tank that is overflowing with forgiveness. In short, the pipe has to be connected to every part of your rooms. I didn't hear amen from anybody in this church today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you, you, you must be willing to forgive for you to be able to enjoy the relationship. Because if I fail not to forgive, I can't stay married. Nobody can stay married. Because marriage is about love. And love has a lot to do with forgiveness. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Any relationship will last long when forgiveness is part of the cake you share. Any relationship. The longevity of relationship is in forgiveness, not in performance. The longevity of relationship is in forgiveness, not in performance. Yes, the longevity of a relationship is in forgiveness, not in performance. So the spirit is in your life to help you. I like us to go to Romans 8, 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Now watch this. Look at what he said in Romans 8.26. It said, likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmity. The job of the Spirit is to help. It's to help your infirmity. The, 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 the job of the Spirit is to help your infirmity. And, and without him, you cannot be helped. It's to help us. Sometimes you don't know what to do. What do I do about this business? What do I do about this? But the Spirit helps you. He helps you when you don't know where to go to. Always depend on the Holy Spirit. He knows the best route of escape. I said, always depend on the Holy Spirit. He knows the best route of escape. He knows what you're going to say that will turn this whole thing around. Yes, always depend on him. Because if you don't depend on him, you will stress out. One of the ways people get stressed out is when they don't depend on the Holy Ghost. You'll be tired. You'll be frustrated. You'll be weak. You'll be depressed. So when you depend on him, he becomes your helper. Number six, the Spirit will reveal things to you. The Spirit will reveal things to you. The assignment of the Holy Ghost is to tell you what is ahead. That is why the Holy Ghost gives us word of wisdom. The Holy Ghost is in your life to reveal to you what is ahead of you. You can't know what is ahead of you except by the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You, nobody can know. I can't know what is ahead of me except by the Spirit. It is by the Spirit 
I know what is ahead of me. It is by the Spirit I know what is ahead of me. It is by the Spirit that I know. So without a Holy Ghost, I can't tell. The Spirit can give you visions and dreams. The Spirit can show you things in the night vision of what is about to happen or what is happening around you. The Spirit can show you things to come. It is by the Spirit we locate the right direction. So the Spirit revealed things to us in, in John Gospel 15, 26. In St. John Gospel 15, 26. St. John Gospel 15, 26. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In St. John Gospel... Hallelujah. In St. John Gospel, chapter 15, verse 26, he said this. He said, But when the comforter is come, whom I shall send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. He shall testify. He shall testify of me. That simply means we can know what is not of God. And we can know what is of God. He will testify of me. He will talk about me. He will reveal me to you. So the comforter is in your life to reveal Jesus to you. To reveal the will of God to you. So he's in your life to reveal things to you. And let me say this to you. He reveals things through word of wisdom. He reveals things through word of knowledge. Hallelujah. He reveals things through word of wisdom. He reveals things through word of knowledge. Word of wisdom and word of knowledge is not only for prophets. Every New Testament believer can key into the gifts of the Spirit by yielding to the Spirit. Every New Testament believer can yield himself to the release of the Spirit, to word of wisdom, to word of knowledge, to the gift of prophecy. Every one of us here can prophesy. If we yield to the Holy Ghost, we can prophesy. The gifts of the Spirit is not only for the fivefold ministry. The gift of the Spirit is for the body of Christ. Everyone in the body can have access to word of wisdom, can have access to word of knowledge, can have access to the gift of prophecy. And, and let me say this to you. God is willing to reveal things to you if you're willing to yield to him. Yielding to him is the key to him revealing things to you. So the next, number seven, the Spirit is in your life to empower you. The Spirit is in your life to empower you. Have you ever felt weak before? You couldn't pray the way you should pray. You couldn't read the Bible the way you could read the Bible. And suddenly you just start praying and strength just came. You start reading again. You start praying again. In your spiritual work, you will need the help of the Spirit all through. I said, in your spiritual walk, you will need the help of the Spirit. It is the Spirit that helps us to be patient with people. I'm telling you. Some people can drive you crazy if you want to. Some people can make things that will make you feel bad. And you say, you are slow in understanding. Have you ever told someone before you are slow in understanding? Sometimes the Holy Ghost has taken you to a place he hasn't taken them to. So be patient with people. Hallelujah. That's a very big sign. Be patient. Be patient. Maybe it's your wife. Be patient with your wife. Maybe God is telling you something right now and your wife can't get it. Be patient with her. Maybe it's your husband. The Lord is telling you something now your husband can't get it. Be patient. Be patient with people until they receive the revelation you received. Be patient with people until they come into what God is showing to you. You know, sometimes God will tell me what he wants to do. And sometimes I'm just quiet. Because sometimes you say some things to people, they look at you as if you're out of your mind. You say, Apostle, are you out of your mind? I said, no, I'm not out of my mind. That's what God is telling me. So God can be telling you something right now and someone look see if you're out of your mind. But the truth of it is that you're not out of your mind. It is by the Spirit you get to know those things. It's by the Spirit. It's by the Holy Ghost. 
You got to know those things. It's by the Spirit of God, you, you receive those insights, you receive those revelations, you receive those understanding. It's by the Spirit of God. So the Spirit is in you to empower you. In Acts chapter 1, from verse 6 to 10, it's the Spirit. So in Acts chapter 2, you saw how the Spirit came upon them. And when the Spirit came upon them, they started doing mighty things. It is the Spirit that empowers. In Romans chapter 8, from verse 5 to 7, and it's not talking about to be spiritually minded, to be spiritually minded, to be, spiritually, to be carnally minded is dead, and to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It said those who are uh, good. Let's, let me read that scripture. Romans, Romans chapter 8. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Romans chapter 8, I'd like to read from verse 5. It says, For death after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Wow. But then after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is dead, but to be spiritually minded is life. And spiritually minded, you become empowered. We are empowered by the spirit of God. There are things you can't do by yourself, I'm telling you. Your energy will fail. How many of you have told yourself, I want to pray for two hours? After one week, you couldn't make it the next week. Sorry, I didn't. Trying to ask a question. Have it happened to anybody here before? He said, Lord, I want to pray for three hours. And it started the first week, it was successful. Three weeks later, you are trying, you are battling to pray for 30 minutes. It's a fight. <laughs> you know what is going on? Spiritually. <laughs> there is a pressure coming. And, and let me say this to you. Never feel guilty when you pray less than the time. Never feel guilty. If you're to pray for three hours and then you pray for one hour, give God the praise. And if you're to pray for one hour, then you pray for 30 minutes, give God the praise. Because there is somebody who can pray for two minutes. Have you tried to pray before looking at your clock and said, you prayed for some while? He said, nah, I've prayed for one hour. Then you turn your, your watch and look at it, it's 15 minutes. And you say, the time not moving. I thought, all this why I'm praying. <laughs> That by now should have gone very far. So when we pray, God expects us to pray with expectation, to pray to have visitation, to pray to have encounters, to pray to move forward. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we're empowered by the Spirit. Finally, number eight, which is the last one, he quickens us. The Spirit quickens us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit quickens us. Who quickens us? The Holy Ghost quickens us. When we don't know what to do, he will teach us what to do. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Romans 8, 11, he said, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. So the spirit quickens there are certain things I want to do right now. I won't be able to do them except the Spirit of God quickens me. He quickens me to give. He quickens me to teach. He quickens me to walk in love. He quickens me to do the things he would have me do. He quickens me to excel in the things he has called me to do. It is by the Spirit who are being quickened. So the Spirit is in you to quicken you. Sometimes you told yourself, I'm, I'm going to walk in love by forgiving this person. And then you just remembered everything they did to you and you get angry again. It doesn't happen to anybody here. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're forgiving, you say you're forgiving the person. And then three days later, you say, why should I forgive her? All of those things she did to me. Why should I forgive him? All of those things he, he did to me. No, forgiveness is not by feeling. Forgiveness is by faith. Forgiveness is not by feeling. Forgiveness is by faith. We forgive by faith. By faith you let go. By faith you say, Lord, I, I forgive that fellow. You do it by faith. It is the spirit that quickens. Because Satan wants to tell you, why should you forgive him that easily? Make it hard for him. Make it tough for him. Make it difficult for him. For some men, they want to punish their wife for hurting them. They stop giving her money. So I'm going to see how you're going to get the money. <laughs> for some women, they stop denying. They start denying their husband sex. They say no sex in this house. 
you're going to feel the heat of what you have done. Okay. Let me say this before the service close. Please don't defraud one another. That is the scripture. Don't defraud one another. We are losing many Christian marriages because many of us are acting in the flesh. You can imagine married couple, one month, no sex. Why? I'm offended. And, and we are telling God to bless us. We are praying in tongues. You know, friends, you check your tongue well. Please check your tongue well. Identify with your tongue. Check your tongue well. Because walking in love is the greatest key in your faith work. You say, no, Apostle, you don't have an idea of how this man is treating me. Okay, I don't. But in love, many things get healed. In, I'm telling you. Is that possible you like to preach on love so much all the time? Love, Apostle. Apostle, tell me something else. No, that's what I'm going to tell you. Love. Walking in love. That's what I'm going to tell you. No, no. You have no clue. Because when you walk in love, your faith flourish. When you walk in love, your faith flourish. Your faith gets better. He empowers you through your love work. And I pray for you this morning. That these things we have mentioned that the Holy Ghost will do for you, He will help you break out of self. He will help you break out of bitterness. I don't know. I could not feel someone going through a severe pain, but the Holy Ghost said, as you release it, your peace will get stronger. Yes, 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 yes. The Holy Ghost just told me that. As you release it, your peace will get. You know, sometimes. Sometimes you apologize to someone not because you're the one that made the mistake. Sometimes you apologize to someone because you want the peace to stay. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes you tell someone, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And everybody said, I don't like, he's wrong, this person is wrong. But you just went your way to make peace. You see, making peace is not for the person. Making peace is for you. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I think I preached good to someone today. I said, making peace is not for the person. Sometimes when we make peace, it's not for the person. We're making peace for our faith. You know, some people may think that, oh, he's weak. That's why he came to apologize to you. <laughs> he's weak. He's weak. That's why she came to apologize. No, 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 no. He said, follow all men with peace. Without holiness, no man can see the Lord. I pray for you this morning that the wisdom of God will come upon you. I pray that you will excel in the things of the Spirit. I pray that you will continue to have victory. I pray that the hand of God will continue to be upon you. I pray that you continue to have insight and wisdom and understanding. I pray that you, you'll be able to see and understand and move forward in your work with God. I pray the Lord Jesus strengthen you. I pray peace return to your heart. I pray the joy of the Lord return to your heart. I pray that God will keep you going in the right direction. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart, that God has raised Jesus from the dead Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, it means you're born again. And the Spirit of God will lead you from this day forward. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, It's Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. And also, you can get our books on Amazon for the things you need to know about your future. It's available on Amazon.com. And there is greatness in you. It's also available on Amazon.com. Also, watch us every day on FinishWorkTV.com. It's stream 24-7, helping people around the world to receive the engrafted word of God. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. Until I come your way soon, please don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. Go